Hello. I got a couple of these Hobby King transceiver radios a while ago, so I thought I'd do a little range test video and see how they go. This is just at ground level to start with. Um, I think these radios are most commonly used with Pixhawk and ArduPilot and things like that to provide a telemetry link. That's why it actually has telemetry radio in the title. Um, but you can use them just as a plain old serial link with the good old RX and TX pins as well as it says here, or just use it for your DIY projects that needs a wireless serial interface. Um, I don't really have a specific purpose for having got this, but I thought it might be useful to use with my Farm Rover project to get a communication link at ground level and through trees that would be a little bit better than a 2.4 gigahertz radio link. Uh, so this is the 915 megahertz one here. And they're fairly cheap, and I wasn't really expecting too much from them. And I was right not to expect too much from them. It didn't really work as well as I thought they might. Um, I tried a 433 megahertz version of something similar, the Orange RX transceiver thingies that I tried a couple of years ago. They were total crap, so <laughs> that's one reason I wasn't expecting too much from these. They come with quite a few cables and connections, so you can use USB. Uh, and they give you a normal USB to micro USB cable and then a USB on the go cable Which is quite handy as well for other stuff <laughs> in my case I'll be using that for other things as well uh, And then you can also connect it with these I think they're called DF13 plugs. So if we look at the end of the um, Box here you've actually got both of these connections on both modules So that's micro USB and then the DF13. I think that's what it's called uh, So you can use either of them interchangeably apparently that's what this V2 means Previously, only one of these plugs was on each one, so one would have the USB and one would have the other type of plug. Uh, but now they both have USB and TF13, so that's quite handy. I noticed one of the reviews here says that he was suspicious of the antennas, so I took one apart and it was for 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, I think the antennas that I got were not for 2.4 gigahertz, but they were a very strange antenna length. They were about 44 millimeters exposed wire inside the antenna. So it's not 2.4 gig, but I don't think it's the proper length for 915 megahertz either. Although the antennas that I got did have printed on them, 915. So it's a bit strange, and I'll show you the results of my modification that I made to expose the antenna, the inner core of the antenna, to be a little bit more appropriate for the 900 megahertz range. So in order to do this test, I resurrected a, an old Android project that I made when I was in Japan to test the range of the NRF24 modules. And this is a very handy thing to do, to use, because it has a GPS inside it. So it can, as I move along, it can record how far away it is and do lots of nice sampling of how many packets per second it was receiving. Uh, in the case of the NRF24, I was actually measuring packets per second, as the uh, title implies there. But what I did for this test is I measured bytes per second. And I sent, um, let me just show you the next little bit. So this is on the receiving side, the Android tablet. And on the sending side, I had a laptop computer. And I'm using this program called HTERM, which is quite handy way of um, testing and checking serial connections. And it lets you uh, manipulate or change all of the different types of settings that you can use. So basically any setting you can think of you can change it here. So it's quite handy in that respect. And it also lets you uh, send things in hex and binary and whatever kind of format you want. So I had this running on my laptop and I'm sending a sequence of bytes here. We have if f is 255 uh, and then 254, 253, 252. So this set of four bytes here is the packet header that I was using for the, uh, the Android test originally, the one I made when I was back in Japan. And initially I was using that with an Arduino, and the Arduino would send the next two bytes as the number of packets per second, because it was actually the Arduino that was receiving the bytes, not the Android tablet. So this two bytes here would tell me, for this, in this case it would be three bytes per se, uh, three packets per second. So all I've done is put a couple of dummy values in these two bytes here, and now the Android tablet or the Android program is receiving the bytes directly. So that's a six byte packet there, and you can see I've just repeated this six bytes again here, 
and then I've done that another eight times. So there's a total of 60 bytes here, just that same thing repeated 10 times. So that's 60 bytes, and this program also lets you do this handy thing here, which says um, if you set repetitions to zero, it will send it forever, infinite times, and you can say how often you want it to send. So I've put a one in here, which will be every 0 0.1 seconds. So that's going to be 60 bytes, 10 times a second, which is 600 bytes per second. Now this serial link can go quite a bit faster than that, but 600 bytes seem to me like a reasonable amount of data per second that could something useful could be done with, and it's still not coming close to saturating the bandwidth of the connection. So it probably could go a bit faster than that, but that's what I did for my test. Initially, when I was first trying to get these two modules to work, I could see that they were connecting properly because there's a nice little green LED which shows you when they're when they've found each other, it just goes solid instead of flashing. But whenever I sent some data, it didn't make any sense. It was all just getting garbled as if it was the wrong board rate. And I finally found out that I needed to set both ends to 57,600 in order to have the data come out sensibly at the other end. So it seemed like whatever setting I was making here was just sort of being ignored inside the module, um, if that kind of makes sense. And I wasn't sure how to get the module itself to change any of those settings so for my tests I just did it at 57.6 like this and it all works okay um, but I discovered later that you can use um, well you could probably use other things but I found that you could use the ArduPilot program to change quite a bunch of settings here so I've uh, this board rate 57 is 57,600 so you could probably change that there if you if you wanted to do something a little bit slower so maybe I could get a little bit better range with a slower board rate, I'm not sure, but I'll just show you the test that I've done so far anyway. Uh, and the other thing that I wanted to check with this setup is that I am actually using the proper 100 milliwatt or 20 dBm transmit power, which is what this one here is. Uh, so you can check any of those other settings if there are some of interest to you. This one here I actually changed when the module arrived um, it came set from 915 megahertz up to 928, but I read somewhere that for New Zealand you should be using 921 to 928. That was in the ArduPilot documentation somewhere, so that's what I did. So here's how I've arranged things. Just the laptop sitting on the fence post and the transmitter is transmitting. It's a little hard out there as you can see by the lights. Uh, so I'm just going to take this and go down that road about a kilometre or so. Uh, there's a couple of trees in the way there, and maybe that shed might get in the way, but not nothing too much. So I'm going to treat this as a roughly clear line of sight test at ground level. So on the receiving end, I've just taped it to the back of the tablet like that. And I'm just going to ride along at about this pace, whatever that is, and see what we get. Okay, I didn't quite make it to one kilometer because at about 977 meters here and I'm seeing long periods of nothing punctuated by the occasional burst of about 50 to 100 bytes per second. And I'm just about to go down a dip here. That's the one kilometer mark there just at the corner. So I don't think there's too much point. Uh, well, actually... If I go over there, I might catch a little bit more signal. So I'll just go over there, but I'm not really expecting much. So I think I'll, I'll call it uh, call an end to this this leg of the trip, so to speak. Ah, uh, the trees are in the way there, eh? Ah, okay. Still, um, not quite as good as I was expecting. So here's the result of that first test, and you can see that I've set 600 as the, uh, you could think of this as like a 100% signal received value. And it go, works pretty well up to about 400 meters and then drops off quite quickly after that to the point where you're getting not much really after 800 and pretty much nothing at all after 1,000 or even before 1,000 really. Uh, but as I mentioned just before, there's a bit of a dip, like the hill goes, the ground goes down a bit there, so I probably wouldn't have got much after that anyway. Um, but from this we can see, this is the average of the two directions going out and in again. Um, so it wasn't as good as I thought it might be. 
Uh, and over here you can see I've labeled this one 44 millimeters and that's because when I open the antenna up you can see it says 915 megahertz on there but for some reason the length of the exposed part of the antenna and there was uh, 40 well it's uh, I think this is doesn't quite look like it but that's actually lined up with the end of the antenna there and this piece here also doesn't quite look like it but this is where the sheath stops and it's about 43 and a half or maybe 44 millimeters there and that sort of seemed a little bit strange to me so I did one more test and I cut the sheath way back I actually broke part of this plastic off as well to get it down a little bit further and I ended up with this which is approximately 78 millimeters from here to there um, and I was going to put it in this um, plastic shield to keep it straight but I decided to just use it kind of naked like this and that seemed to work okay uh, it was a bit windy but I don't think the wind blowing it it wasn't blowing too much so the next day I tried again and this is the result here the orange line labeled 78 millimeters and you can see that there is a bit of data still coming through at the one kilometer mark but unfortunately that was as far as I got because I bumped into my landlord out there and even though I've been here for about 10 months already it's the first time I've laid eyes on him. Um, he likes to go through the rental agency anytime he wants to tell me something. So I'd already suspected that he wasn't really the friendliest of fellows. In fact, it was quite a different situation to the last farm that I stayed at. They were really super friendly and they were perfectly okay with me going out in the fields every now and then to do this nerdy radio testing and stuff. But this guy made it abundantly clear that I was not welcome at all to be doing that. Um, so that was the end of that and I think I'll be looking for somewhere else to live now but anyway you can see quite a bit better reception overall uh, and it, although well it does start to peter off at about the same point so in that respect you, you're not getting 100% past 400 meters but you're getting a lot better than the 44 millimeter antenna was giving you past 100 meter, uh, 400 meters uh, so it's still decently usable to about 800 meters I'd say um, one other thing I should probably look at is the presence of trees right in the way. Hang on a minute, let me get my Google map. This is the 970 meter point here and just after that the ground dips down so from about here there's no line of sight anyway. So uh, this is where I stopped the first day and if we follow this line back to the transmission point we'll see that unfortunately, if it just fills in, just by nasty coincidence it goes right through these trees, or almost through these trees. It's probably not going through the trunks, but nevertheless, those trees are a bit in the way. And then that tree is in the way. <laughs> and then this building, although it's not a huge building, is right in the way as well. Um, and then there's nothing else until we get back to the fence post there. Uh, so it could have been better line of sight wise for a test, but um, unfortunately, these fields are a little bit tricky to ride your bicycle across and the road is a lot easier so that's why I ended up doing it along the road um, but anyway that's um, that's the result <laughs> if anyone was curious there you go that's probably what you can expect from these modules so I uh, hope that was interesting thanks for watching